Okay, so we're going to talk about pivoting. Um, first, a very simple problem that we've encountered. You have uh, a matrix that uh, A and a right-hand side B, and we're going to solve it. In fact, the, a solution does exist. So the matrix is non-singular, and we're planning to use Gaussian elimination, but we're stuck because A11 is zero. So we have to do some swapping of rows because, of course, they're the same equations if we swap the rows uh, of both A and B, but um, it's just the way that Gaussian elimination works that we need to use uh, this, this uh, first number in the matrix to eliminate the numbers below it. So um, if we swap the first and the third equation, um, then we're set up with the zero already uh, in the column where we need it. And I've, I've just chosen that to, to bring the biggest number up to the top um, as the reason for that. But uh, of course, it, it will work as long as you swap it till you get something non-zero. And so with that number swapped, we can start our Gaussian elimination. In general, pivoting is a good idea. Well, actually, if you're doing it by hand or if you're doing it with fractions, then you probably want to do some tricks to keep the fractions as simple as you can. But generally on a computer, we're using floating point arithmetic. And in that case, um, to prevent errors due to rounding of the numbers, we, we want to use the biggest number that we can. So it's called partial pivoting. Gaussian elimination with partial pivoting. And when we're working on a particular column, so we've got as far as the jth column, we bring the biggest number uh, up from, from all the numbers underneath it uh, into that position on the diagonal. So in other words, we, we look down that column that we're working with and we choose the number that's biggest in absolute value. So it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, it's the biggest uh, absolute value. And then we, we swap that with the row that we're working with. It's called partial pivoting. I suppose full pivoting, we'd actually swap columns as well. Um, of course, then you have to keep track of, uh, you know, that now the columns correspond to different variables. So it um, makes it a little bit more complicated. So, so uh, this is why we're looking at partial pivoting. So an example should um, fix it in our minds. Suppose we've got as far as working in column two. So column one is already sorted out with a row of zeros. And then we look down the column, I mean, there's no zeros, but um, the, the recipe for partial pivoting says we get the biggest absolute value number, which is seven. And then we swap that with the one that we're working with. And so this row becomes seven. And of course, um, we've, we're working with the augmented matrix. So we've also swapped the right-hand sides up. Otherwise, uh, it would be a different set of equations. So that's all you do. So um, in this case, back to the original example with the zeros there, partial pivoting says that we exchange row one and row three to get the four up there, and then we keep going. So for floating point numbers, at least, you will always use uh, partial pivoting. Um, again, if you're doing it by hand, you know, in, unless it's specifically the question says solve by Gaussian elimination with partial pivoting. If it just says solve a system of equations and that's all you need to do, you, you just solve them. But this is a recipe for partial pivoting. So um, here's a system of equations written as fully as equations. We would take the augmented matrix. These are just the labels of the rows. You know, so write that out necessarily but you should say which operations you're doing. Um, and uh, what we do is we look down for the biggest number in absolute value, and that's minus two, because we don't care about the minus. And we swap that one up to the top, so we've exchanged row one and row two. Um, and um, in, in this case, um, we're going to do a method where we now make that one um, so uh, we, we divide that t entire row by, uh, by the number in that row um, because, of course, that, that makes it easier be because um, 
uh, we then only have to do it once. I mean, so the, so the point is that um, uh, we're always going to be subtracting a, a multiple of, of that row. And if it's already one, then it's, it's easy to find that multiple, isn't it? So um, multiply that row by minus a half just to make that number one. And we've divided by the number two. The point is we want to be dividing by the biggest number. OK, and then we use that one to get rid of the other rows. And, and it's just saying <laughs> star is just a new row, if you like. Um, so um, uh, that, that's the, the new row two that's been scaled. And we subtract it from row one and row three. I guess I guess it gets a little bit awkward numbering these this way. Um, you, you can just, uh, you know, once you've changed the row, you just, just call it row, row one, row two, row three in, in the new scheme of things. As long as you can see exactly what you've done. OK, so um, we we subtract row two and then we've got some new rows. Um, and uh, then, of course, we're going to look down this column. And it's the four that we want. That's the biggest number. So we swap that one up to four. Uh, we divide through by four, making that one. And uh, then we so we add two of that to um, to the other row. So um, so to get rid of that number, Let's just look at that. It's minus two. So um, we need twice this row. So um, we have actually got um, uh, an upper triangular matrix with zeros here, and um, Actually, we can we can already see the answer. I mean, uh, we could, of course, divide this by minus four to make that one, but it's already obvious that um, x three is minus one. Um, having these as one just makes it a little bit easier because we don't have to divide by that number when when we're solving it. But once we've found that x three is minus one, then we've got x two minus x three is one. So, um, of course, that means x2 is 0. And then putting back uh, x3 is minus 1 there, x2 is 0. And so you see that x1 has to be 1 as well. x1 is 1. So the solution is 1, 0, minus 1. So in floating point arithmetic, um, that's where you've actually got rounding because you're just keeping a fixed number of um, decimal digits. Um, Gaussian relation actually gives you different answers depending on the order of the arithmetic. So the point about floating point arithmetic, unlike full arithmetic with fractions, is it, it matters what order you do the operations in. Because if you add something that's too small to, to another number, it might just not change it. But if you add up lots of things that are small first, it might get big enough that uh, then it does make a difference. So um, ordering matters in floating point arithmetic. Partial pivoting is just switching the equations around to get the, the biggest number to divide by. Um, and uh, it's the biggest magnitude that you, that you use. So Gaussian elimination turns a system of equations into um, an upper triangular system. Um, if uh, you're thinking geometrically, um, we can interpret a system of um, either lines in two dimensions or planes in three dimensions. Um, and the idea of partial pivoting is just to, to give better floating point arithmetic. So the operations that we do um, to uh, make um, uh, an upper triangular matrix can be thought of as, as multiplying by a matrix on the left. In other words, each of these row operations corresponds to a matrix. And in the next uh, video clip, we're going to see how that we accumulate those matrices and um, write our original matrix as a lower triangular matrix times an upper triangular matrix.